So he's ready. <laughs> It's a question that I've asked repeatedly, but clearly I'm still struggling with it. So I'll drag you back into it. Um, <clears throat> so the, the question is essentially, is there a difference between being lost in thought, uh, which is not living in presence, versus <clears throat> intuitively deciding that I'm going to sit here on this table and think this thing through, whatever I'm dealing with. Uh, and what I'm dealing with, let's say, is a choice between A and B. It has an emotional charge. If I take path A or B, uh, there may be other practical, other considerations that are non-emotional, financial, whatever it is. Um, but until I actually go through the mechanics of even arithmetic, emotion, how do I feel about choice A, how do I feel about choice B, register my feelings, write them on a piece of paper, um, <clears throat> and then, um, then step back and say, okay, well now what is intuitively arising and is there no fear, no grasping, do I feel unconditional love? Um, what my intuitive answer to my own question, and which is where I need your help, uh, is this type of planned thinking, which I think what you've referred to before as, oh, that's intuitive. And don't get too caught up in that if it's happening intuitively, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or a game theory, if then else, scenario modeling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But last two, three days where I've been dealing with this uh, fairly complex situation, I, I've been trying to, I don't know what I've been trying to, I'm clearly seeing there's a lot of thinking going on. Mm. But it's not, I wouldn't call it stressful thinking. Mm. It's not that I'm feeling low or dejected. Uh, so intuitively, I'm feeling that kind of quote unquote planned thinking is okay. And I'm not a hostage of my mind. Mm versus being lost in thought and ruminating and you know emotions arising so just wanted some clarity on that is is that intuitive understanding right or am i again back to fooling myself yes yes so a simple tip could be that as long as you're not leaving the present then everything is okay so intuitively I don't feel like we are ever really called upon to think or to uh, conceptually draw conclusions even about work and spreadsheet and things like that. So when we remain there in the presence, because that is the superset and it is not dependent on thinking for intelligence or thinking for uh, whatever guidance is needed. So try it out that if you're truly guided intuitively in this way, notice whether it is really guiding you to like a planned thinking or just like a contemplative openness or contemplative remaining till the answers seem to just Arise, you see, and the answers could be on in the outward face of it may seem analytical, or they may seem emotional, or they may seem rational, whatever they may seem. Allow them to arise from there, and hold on strongly to remaining in that presence, remaining in that light. So, from there. If actions are arising like this, these words are arising, mm. then things can also be typed on a mm. spreadsheet or mm. something like that. We don't really yeah. remember that this intelligence is the superset from which all other intelligence comes. Even the intelligence of nature comes from there. Right. So we don't have, it will rarely say that now 
I guide you to sit and think about something. So, so that's a beautiful point, and if I can elaborate on that, it's making more sense now on that what you said is while I'm even doing game theory. If I do this, then that will happen, then that domino will fall, then that. So that appears to me like, oh, am I thinking too much? Mm -hmm. But it didn't appear like that. It just appeared like the mind is now functioning as a tool. There was no grasping, like I want A to happen or B. It was just like a very genuine, open exploration of two options. Because I wasn't able to just sit and look at A and B, not do the game theory, and then come up with a intuitive answer this is feels like there's no information to act on yes but uh, we must get used to that no information in the sense yeah, that, so I, I yeah, it that. seems a bit wobbly yeah no no i i, I have been trying it in yeah. many things yeah. and life has become 10x better yeah. in so many things since i've been coming to satsang on these types of conundrums but some of them are so complex it's like I, I can't sit on planet Earth and figure out if Earth is round or not unless I send a spaceship and look at it. My intuitive insight doesn't have enough information for that. Yeah, okay, let's slowly then. So, <laughs> intuitively, there is no stopping you from whatever action outwardly needs to happen in the body. So, that first thing is clear. But I am only questioning that that need for more information to that which knows the self, you see? which which is uh, which is not what I would say easily. I'll have to really be stretched to say that because this is where the reality of the self is known, and this is truly where all the intelligence that runs this universe arises from. So to say that that doesn't have enough data or something like that. That seems a bit strange. Having said that, it may guide you to work on something in some way. It doesn't stop uh, you from doing that. Maybe it doesn't want you to become proud. Maybe it just because if you just started coming up with new scientific discoveries, <laughs> sitting intuitively, it's like I have the superpower now. Every decision I make is the best. You see, so. Uh, it only it knows its uh, its ways. So, its Father, it did mysterious. feel like that. It did feel like my being is acting through the tool of the mind. In this case, I don't know how else to say it. For it finally to make a very calm, intuitive yeah. uh, decision, yeah. it didn't feel like an oppression. Which typically is what I mean by lost in thought, oppressive thought, didn't, didn't feel oppressive at all. And so maybe the only reason I'm talking about it is I tend to get confused that as soon as I catch myself thinking is thinking bad. But today what I'm trying to say is thinking as long as it's not oppressive and I'm not feeling a lack of being and all of that, it's feeling okay. But then the yes. outcome. Let's, like, let's really look at it and see whether if it is thinking, then you cannot remain in presence. That is the design of this. So maybe what you're calling thinking is just your intuition flowing. It's just playing out. But I don't want to just like say and give uh, give that as a reasoning. So you we can notice now in the next couple of hours that we are together. Stay in the presence, and then if you catch yourself getting caught up in thought, then uh, see whether you you are still in the presence. You know? So in reality, you are you are that in which presence itself arises. But in the play of this Maya, it is impossible to hold on to God's presence and be under the hypnosis of thought. You see or so this is the proposal that you have to validate or invalidate. So you can say, oh, actually, I can remain in presence and go along with my thought. So, so a simpler way to maybe illustrate that is that uh, when some work is happening, 
or some decisions have been made and they're playing out. You see, notice whether you're still like this, like this, or you're <laughs> so, and you know what I mean. It is very difficult to put in words when we are when and like this, like this. At least in my experience, has not ever given me the license to become like this, like this. <laughs> Saying, okay, now you got half an hour, just go for it. <laughs> that is not my experience, at least. But I'm happy to hear if that's what you're saying. But um, it's, it's like two different modes. No? It's like this or like this. If the fist is closed or open. Uh, and it's rare for the open fist to say, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. And, guidance. and see yeah. if uh, that <coughs> actually blocks anything, including so-called decision making. So that's the first point. The second point uh, I want to make is that uh, just make sure that everything is me for God and not God for me. That will also keep it like it's it's uh, all is for God, whichever way God wants to move this. And in the moving of that, if I remain in God's presence and I make the worst decisions, that is still fine. It is still fine. Because the worst, it is a contradiction in terms. The goodness of something is determined only whether it came from God or not. So don't allow your intellect in there to judge the quality of the decision making. It's like that child who told me, very sweetly, she said, I don't know if you were here, she also um, was visiting um, uh, for a day and when I met her, she said that, you know, I'm very data oriented. You heard, you heard me say this? I'm very data oriented. So I keep a spreadsheet of my decisions. When I go with my heart, I, I track how that went. When I go with my head, I track how that went. Okay. And then on the basis of that, then I uh, I'm trying to conclude whether I should be more heartfelt or intellectual. So I said, you must throw away that spreadsheet because we don't have the capacity to judge the quality of our decision. Though, and that is why, why faith is needed. You see, if it was just rational, then <coughs> you could convince everybody about this path. You see, if it was just rational, you could rationally just explain. But there comes a point where that leap of faith is needed where rationality will not be able to determine the goodness and or badness. So in the spreadsheet, what is the capacity that we have that we can say this went well and this went badly and on the basis of which I will decide. So is your life for God? Yeah. Then at least the pressure of me having to take the right call, that goes away. You see, without that pressure, you, you allow yourself to remain more organically, naturally in the present. So I have encountered these types of situations where so-called intellectual approach of, but I'm just using spreadsheet as a metaphor. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> There have been situations in the recent past where the spreadsheet is indicating otherwise. Mm. And I have sat back and waited for the answer because that despite all the gymnastics didn't feel intuitively right and taken decisions opposite to the <coughs> spreadsheet. So only in that sense can I say, do I feel I'm trying my best to live in God? I think I'm trying my best is all I can say. I don't know if it ultimately is there or not. All of us, all of us can only say yeah. we are trying. Yeah. We can't really give ourselves the certificate. At least I can't. So, thank you.
whether you ask is your life for god uh, i don't uh, i don't have any uh, i'm not saying i don't believe god or something like that uh, i simply don't know and also there is no devotion no devotion, devotion or There's nothing no devotion. comes up zero uh, very occasionally sometimes could be like i was watching mahabharat that uh, uh, that krishna shows his uh, uh, the, what you call that virat roop virat roop momentarily devotion at the time comes like even if i see some lord shiva bhajans uh, something momentarily comes all the time uh, if the question is asked uh, is it my life for god it's like more like god is there i am here i'm not denying god or i'm not going against or but uh, more than that i'm not uh, feeling any <coughs> any way about the god okay so thank you thank you for that question um if there is so, so let's break it down into the construct so you said it's not that i don't believe in god no? now i realize the way that you are saying believe is in a way what i mean when i say faith it's because what is a belief when you take a concept to be true that is a belief is it so uh, let's look at belief so when i say okay there is a god i believe it i am okay with it is it i am okay with it so that then becomes a belief or i really believe it you see then we say it's a strong belief a conviction you see so many feel that in spirituality the job is to come to a conviction like that but it isn't no it isn't the really the job is to come to a faith you see what is the difference between faith and belief faith is to trust what intuitively you are finding and belief is just to rely on a set of concepts that the mind itself is giving okay. so we must come to a faith about god and once you come to a faith about god then to live for me is next to impossible then it's not an effort that i must make my life about god once you come to faith in god then naturally the call is very simple because on one hand is the non existent notional idea of me and the other hand is the most pristine discovery that you have in the human condition so really the question doesn't remain difficult once you come to an intuitive insight of god's presence being here so we must discard the realm of belief when we talk about spirituality because spirit god's presence which is spirit cannot be found uh, mentally or conceptually so what do you find intuitively what is your heart saying If you go that way, it won't tell you what the heart is saying. Yeah, not that. Other. Not that. It's okay. Take your time because it can feel like I'm in pressure. I have to answer, so you feel like you have to go to the mind for a response. Don't do that. Don't worry. Take your time. Let it arise from your heart. immediately just in this change it transforms our life whether we recognize it or not just in this change that and that which is a hellish way to live just in the mental operation of what what is it like that to
intuitively uh, i don't know even whether it is intuitive but it's very clear to me that uh, i really don't exist and whatever is there as me is really very uh, tiniest insignificant and uh, 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 your words and gurujis all masters uh, that's that reality so uh, for me i don't know uh, um, i really don't exist in that way so what you do is you take a few minutes stay here and then speak from there because what is happening is that it's like the switch is too sudden so it's getting mixed up your heart is there but what is coming out of your mouth is getting a little bit contaminated with what you think or what you take to be true so just don't be scared to speak gibberish if it is coming from the right source then that gibberish is what everyone needs to hear take some time The presence is apparent to you. I am. Yes. Stay with that. Any moments spent in the light of this presence is not wasted. But all moments spent away from it are wasted. The moments spent in the light of this. holiness the temple within is a worthwhile life when we leave from here that is like not living at all So my only job is to invite everyone here to God's presence. I'm only saying that it's so nice here. Why would you live in the oppression and the slavery of the mind? Immediately you sense a spaciousness a vastness a broadness to your existence compared to the limited way in which we were operating i think this i think that i believe this i believe that it just sounds like too much work you see i am too lazy to live in the head it just sound like too much work It's like one is standing in the shade, no, in the shade of a beautiful tree, and another brother is in the sweltering sun and complaining about the sun. So I'm saying, just come. And then that one says, but I don't think I can. And don't think, just come. But what about my life in the sun? I have created all this. But you are basically in the heat of the mind. Your life doesn't feel like it is auspicious. It doesn't feel like it is pleasant. It doesn't feel like it is. It is true. It is a true life. So many times again, it can seem like. we don't know how to make the jump but i am just here to call you and say come jump don't ask how just come just come otherwise 
years may go by, lifetimes may go by, and we may keep having the same conversation. And basically, the dichotomy is just that one is in the shade of God's light, strangely enough, and one is in the sweltering heat of the mind. <coughs> that has to change. Just needs a little bit of faith. Maybe sometimes it will feel like some courage is needed because your mind will say, but your life will be a mess, you cannot live. You're not living anyway in the mind. It's as it is a mess. So don't try to make the mess more palatable. Don't try to make the mess make sense. Come to your right home. It's just because you got lost and went to the wrong house. That is the human condition. And once you get a little bit used to living here, You know, it will tempt you say, what are <laughs> Not that. Nothing can compel you once you're grounded in your presence, in God's presence. And in most cases, whatever I've noticed, life doesn't come to a standstill. In most cases, life continues outwardly, but you are at home. The movie goes on. You thought you were that character and you had to run that life and character. Then you realize that you are the light of the projector and you are the witness of even the light. comes to a simplicity and what you must not do, those who are a little intellectually inclined, try to force this into an understanding. You see, they're like, it's here, but if only I could understand this, here. but we can't do that because it's too broad, it's too vast, like our hands cannot grasp this space in the same way our concepts cannot grasp the, the reality of God's presence. So it's a different completely different way of life. You cannot expect to squeeze spirituality into an existing way of life and say, now I'm spiritual. To be spiritual needs a full reformatting. How many of you know what uh, floppy disks are? You know, floppy disks. So, what if you were a computer and you took took only the floppy disk to be the source of data or the source of information, and actually you had a greater instrument, a hard drive, which you never use? It's like that. You cannot squeeze this into a floppy, you know, it's too small. You see, it was only 501, 514, 540, <coughs> something like that, 514. So you cannot squeeze the whatever gigabytes of data into that. So 
so we must be introduced to this greater source of knowledge self knowledge If you try to use the floppy disk too much, it will get scratches and it will get worse. You know how they used to work. Yeah. All scratches. I have too much fun with these metaphors. I'm just like the spiritual ego is like the the hard floppy drive that's all coming. First, it was just the soft one. The spiritual ego is then surrounds itself with concepts about God itself. Now I'm unbreakable, but it isn't. The point is not to come to an elevated intellect or a better intellectual understanding. Point is to leave that instrument because there is a higher one. To come to this and to continue to use the old instrument is just maybe a force of habit which will wane off. So you could be in some different boats. No? So the first boat could be where you're saying that all this sounds nice, but is there really something like this? You see, sounds very good. I would love to live like that, but is there really that? So all of satsang is mainly devoted to you coming to that discovery, coming to God's presence within, to help you to in discovering that and then the rest of satsang is to help you get over the habit the withdrawal symptoms of the old instrument that's basically all that we are doing here But if you're coming to satsang and you could come for many years, but all that has happened is that you've understood that we've not really transformed you. You came to an understanding and hopefully those that understanding at best serves as pointers. But if those pointers are not used, if we don't marinate in them, thoughtlessly, intuitively, then they don't flower into insight, they don't flower into self-knowledge. So that's why it's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Impossible.
Um, <clears throat> and that's how it feels here, that it's understood, but um, I'm not transformed. So firstly, then I'm very happy you're here because that's my main job. That's my main job. Secondly, your eyes don't show me that it is just a pure intellectual understanding. So I'm not fully buying what you said. You know, it is definitely I'm something. Not, I'm not. I'm not buying it either. I mean, as I'm saying it, <laughs> I see it. So, for a while, the mind itself will try to convince us that I am the only way you know. You don't know any other way. You see, but when you let go of it, even for a few moments, you recognize that you're not lost. In fact, you feel so at home. If we couldn't live without the mind, then in the no mind, everyone would be helter skelter. But we are not. We are so, just so at home. We get used to living like that. And then the mind tricks, even about the, the state of your spiritual progress, won't seem that true, won't seem that alluring. Who lives in your heart? I'm not asking poetically or romantically. I'm asking literally, truly. Is there a presence there? Hmm? Is there a presence there? Yes. So once you at least come to the presence, then really we can ask who, whose presence is this? All the clues are there. This is called the primordial vibration, the light of this universe, home. God said, I am that I am. Jesus said, before Abraham, I am. So all the clues are there. But just to know them is not enough. But at least that much should be inspiration enough for us to make this exploration central in our life, isn't it? Like what if it was true that this presence is God's presence? Is there any other exploration more important than that? cannot be in any sphere of life to be truly inspired in a way that you you are open to the fact that this could be God himself. Then tell me one thing that could be more important for you to explore and discover. Everything else is going to die. This is the only deathless reality. So once you met this crazy man, and if you let him in at least a little bit, you see, then this question must really become central to you. No? He's saying that God's presence is right here, within myself, in my heart. 
and it is the God, the one. Then either you've not let this one in at all, yeah, or this question now has become central to your life. Because if you spend this life discovering everything else that could be discovered about this realm, everything, how this works, how science works, how economics works, how nature works, how everything works, you figured it out. You have been called the genius of all times, huh? the goat, the greatest of all time, greatest human who ever lived. Huh? You've discovered all of that. You even discovered how to expand lifespan from 70, 80 years to 500 years. You live now every human is because of you living 500 years. Every pleasure in the human condition is yours. Everything that you would get in this world is yours. But I'm telling you that even a life like that would not be worth anything compared to a life where you found God. Because we are not speaking of God as a conceptual idea. We are discovering God as a living being. He's a living being. A real one. So if one day you got information that you actually have a child which you didn't know about and the child lives at the other end of the earth, you would do anything to at least meet him. Most of us, we can't really conclude. But most of us would do anything to get a glimpse of that child. But I am giving you information which is much more important than even that. That God is there within you. You just have to turn to Him. So please hear this very literally. Because the mind will make it like fancy or poetic and then you won't hear it. Then it, at best, then it becomes, oh, what beautiful words he shared today. I don't care. <laughs> Turn to God. <laughs> That's important. Let the words be horrible. It doesn't matter. But I'm giving you information that the greatest discovery which, which is the only one which makes this life worth living is the, is yours for the taking. You have to turn within towards him. Turn within towards him and come to his light or die trying. That's the only way to live. The rest is all literally time pass. But the time pass is not trivial. Because once time passes, then you run out of it. You run out of time. So nobody should ever believe that they have too much time and there's enough time for God.
it is not too late but tomorrow will be huh? not too late today but tomorrow will be and nothing in the world gets in your way that is just excuses nothing in the world gets in your way right now this whole world could be exploding in front of you but you could be in god's light don't wait for the world to change life circumstances to change there are so many who keep waiting like that and die with the best intentions they have the best intentions when i have time i will dedicate my life to god when do they have time is it if we fall for the mind trick today we will fall for it tomorrow also it is never ending the alternative that it offers you does it ever say no no this is not that important so you can be with god if you like does it ever say like that that you have to finish this work but it's not that important you can be with god if you like but i'm just saying if you want to just waste time today no see, but this is really important this this is your responsibility you cannot just you know all the righteousness comes out in the mind's temptations but the main job is left we do every other job but the main job is left and if you do the main job then every other job may happen so it's never a question of life circumstances have you explored this like if you notice that if you have middling life circumstances you're not very interested in god no but if circumstances become really bad then how do you become interested in god then you should be more into it because you start realizing that this is beyond you to handle then you want to turn to the higher power so most to come to satsang have come after they have suffered deeply from something some situation happened where you felt like you had no moves left then we turn to god but then in such difficult circumstances if you could surrender all that then you can definitely do it when life seems all right so it's like saying that in the most tricky part of the road i'm okay to let go of the steering wheel and let god drive okay? but when it feels like i'm winning a bit i'm losing a bit then then i better take control then i better not leave it that's strange isn't it it's just the upside down nature of the mind hello you have, you have said maybe hundreds of time this about um, being for god or god for me mm-hmm. and at least this time it has it has hit on a different level father so even the reason is not me even the action is not me even the outcome is not me and whether the outcome is good or bad that also not so there is nothing of me can stand there for mm-hmm. right what is left not then one mind comes and says then what is there for me if all things you have taken away ask it ask the mind which me
I'm telling another child that between jnana and bhakti, there is no room at all, no possibility of the ego to survive. Amol, you can pass the mic to Adwet. Um, I think a lot of the times when I'm making a decision about something, I'm, I try to go to a place of open and emptiness. And sometimes I feel like it's hard to understand whether it's the decision is coming as an impulse or if it's coming from a place of just like intuition and my question is and sometimes i can tell the difference between an impulse and like actual actually just being like a comfortable space and answer so just coming from me but sometimes i can't tell that difference and i want to know if impulse can come from a place of open and emptiness or if it's always just um disguised as like no and it's actually just a negative thing it could be either in the sense that when we say impulse we're really saying post facto post the event that i don't know how that happened so then we label it as impulse it's not like that we mm-hmm. just like it happened oh i don't know why i said that you were just impulsively or instinctively we use those words or it feels like in the moment like i have to do this like i feel mm-hmm. like i have and mm. then it's not so much impulse then it is more like being pressured by the mind being bullied in a way so those times you can very clearly tell when the mind is pressuring you saying you have to do it or i have to do it then it's clearly from the mind and that doesn't mean that automatically you take the opposite stance so if the mind is saying i have to do it then i definitely won't do it you see it doesn't work like that because the mind can just use reverse psychology if you're in that mode where you're not listening to the mind but you'll do the opposite then you can easily say the opposite so you do what it wants so what is the way so just don't be rushed for a moment i've given while you were away maybe these pointers came that uh, the first pointer is to check whether there is a presence of an unconditional love as you are being guided to do something then is there the presence of an unconditional love as that guidance is being received or is the presence apparent to you if the presence is apparent to you then many times things just move Like these words are being spoken, but they're not impulsive; they're intuitive. No? How do I know that? I know that because it just feels like the presence itself is speaking. Then, you see, so allow the presence to move you. That's what I mean by allowing God to move us. And most importantly, and most difficult for the mind to trick is that. if your true nature which is completely purely intuitively known is apparent to you as that movement is happening or that guidance is being received then you can trust that to be intuitive yeah, i think sometimes so I... the first trick is not to be rushed 
Is it because the mind will push you and say, no, no, but you have to send that mail. He's waiting for it, or you have to make that call or send that message or whatever. Yes. I'm just saying that sometimes I confuse, like, it's sometimes like I know the rational answer is something else. And so when I'm feeling like doing the opposite of what my rational is saying, I confuse that to be um, intuition. But it's not because I haven't come to that like that first that come yeah. forth in the process. And, and we can be more relaxed about this because if our intention, if the feeling in our heart is to follow, intuition is to follow God's will, then even if you get confused and fooled, the outcome will be just fine. Because what is important is that you let go of self-will and want it to be open to God's will or your intuitive guidance. So it doesn't matter sometimes. If you fall for a mind trick but we really felt like we are following God, then God will take care of that. With integrity. We can't use it as an excuse. It's like, I wanted to go to that party. Is God saying? Yeah. Actually, God said, wow, I have to go. Buy <laughs> no moves. If you tell him like that, then he's like, okay. <laughs> no, well, he can say, but God here is telling me. <laughs> so the expression was the Sadhguru presence better, you know, meet up and communicate a bit. If you notice, decision making is most of the stress in the human condition. Am I making the right choice? Am I making the right choice? Once that burden is taken away, then most of the concern in the human condition goes away. Because most of the time we are just wondering whether I am making the right choice, I am doing the right thing. No? following the right teacher, coming to the right satsang. <laughs> Even these can seem very difficult choices to make. But once you learn to live here, it's not right. Once the project is clear, like living in God's life, anywhere further the fluff gets eliminated. Yes, you know? yes. A lot of decision making, yes. analyzing the thoughts, you know, exactly. everything. You know, like I, I think I really, I'm so grateful for the like we have clarified this project mm -hmm. because I think all this time that itself was like not seen. Or probably it was seen that something was still quite enamored by the mind. Once you see that to come to the discovery of God and to be in His presence is the only true project of our life then you're absolutely right that a lot of the fluff just doesn't seem that important anymore. Yes. Yes. And this recognition is important and it doesn't matter that it takes time like you've been in satsang a few years because to come to that recognition for yourself is very important because I can keep saying it but sometimes we feel like we're hearing it also. For years we may feel like yeah that is what I really want. I want to 
but what's happening is that the mind makes all devious sort of excuses but one day it really may hit home my life is really for god because that is the only reality that i have ever met or for whatever uh, in whichever way we see it then life becomes simpler but not necessarily easier because there could be things that continue to happen which may seem difficult like difficult things but uh, the simplicity is there because the path is clear the path may still seem to have a lot of obstacles like the mind's temptations could still seem strong from time to time but at least we are clear that we are walking in this path so most who get into the spiritual path walk on the path of the god for me initially and then that switch over needs to happen Ah, I'm wondering where that noise is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what the question is, yeah. but um, so you say just to make sure that it's not me for God, that it's not God for me, but me for God, and. Yeah, sometimes when you say that, when you say that, I guess it's the mind that is playing a trick. Something is presenting God as if it were something else when you're saying that a lot of the time. I know exactly what you're saying when you're saying that, but still. It has I wanted to, to insert a duality that. when there isn't one. Yeah, I wanted to expose that because it, it, I, I just saw it then. That it's like, that it's not, <laughs> it's not God as something else, but the truth, <laughs> the reality within us. So, yes, but we don't need to understand. No, I. No. So we just need to come to a point where we can just follow, especially when it doesn't make sense. You see, otherwise, the, our rationality will keep pulling us back. But what is being pointed to is beyond rational. Is there a separate God and me? No. Does it? Do we live like there is? Yes. So unless we. Uh, so our mind decides to be especially advaitic when it comes to this kind of conversation. Uh, the rest of the time, it's all me, 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 me. Uh, <laughs> me, other, me, and another, me and you, me and that, me and this. You see, like, okay, make make this me subservient to God, in service to God, a devotee of God, a servant of God. Uh, which me? There is no me. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to say it out loud because it, it, the mind uses it to. Yeah. There's a small fragment that kind of rejects the exactly. as if you were to think that. Exactly. And that. See, if everything that I said made complete sense, then every word I've said is a complete waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm so it has to be like a little sensible. And a little beyond sensible, you can call it nonsense, nonsensical if you want, but it has to, it must not really ever make sense to you. Yeah, I'm not looking to make sense, no. but just, just to expose because yes, yes, yes. I, I can see but, the truth. But, but that's what the mind tries to tell you that you just said that I am, there are no two, then why is he saying me for God? That's right. It has to compute somewhere. Yeah, and it does it very automatically, you know. If, yeah, if you that's his nature. The God of 
when we were kids, like we call God outside. Uh, yeah. You know? God outside. But there's nothing more real than God. So this one is what? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, is he God? But outside or inside? I do notice that even though when I speak, I use the word God. When you speak, sometimes I, I replace it with the word truth. Something mm -hmm. once because it. It's easy. That's all right. I often say that also that in actuality they are synonymous. In India, we say Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram, which means truth, Shiva, and beauty. The true truth, the true Shiva and the true beauty are all one. You keep looking for truth, you have you will have to find God. If you keep looking for God, you will come to the truth. So. But it's good to notice the tricks also. It's like you want to paint like a box based on the mind's. The mind wants to paint a box based on the mind's preferences, and you want to live like that. So it's like even if your teacher is saying God, God, you're saying yeah, he means truth, truth. <laughs> <laughs> this is good to say all these things out loud. Because yes, yes, it's very. It's also very helpful for everyone to hear yeah, because the mind plays for everyone in similar ways. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a yeah. one superficial question? Yeah. Why is Krishna white in that? Just it's marble or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you used to seeing him blue. Yeah. yeah. Why is he? All, why is he usually blue? Because that was how he was. The skin color was. Unique, unique blue. Right? <laughs> Same for Ram. Once we stop uh, expecting this realm to make sense to us, no? <clears throat> then it becomes much more stunning. In our sense making, we just make it much smaller. And when you're not wasting time doing that, then you allow your intuition to also show you a deeper nature of this reality which is not as linear and constricted as we may take mentally to be. And it's not a coincidence that Sages thousands of years ago, you know, put their utterances in something like a yoga vashisht. And now physicists are coming to similar, making similar sort of statements about the dreamlike nature of this, and there's no such thing as a as a reality or a real universe. Saying similar things. How is that happening? Because you meet that deeper intelligence 
and because you are not in the <coughs> constriction of everything having to make sense, then you allow that to flow through your expression. Even if you meet God only through our idea of God, then that is very limiting. Like we may have an idea that God is unlimited, but we still, even in that notion of unlimitedness, we make a limitation. Every word draws a boundary. I often say, and this is in response to a question on the chat also, that the best things are only known intuitively. Have we explored this? Like what is universal in the human condition? Like there could be a notion of good versus bad. To speak the truth is good, to lie is bad. To keep what yours is good, but to take from others is bad, is stealing. So there are many of these to treat Everyone with kindness and compassion is good. To be angry and to be uh, unkind or selfish is bad. So where, where does all this come from? Even in tribes which we may not, uh, the rest of so-called civilization may not have met. There is an inherent sense of these things. What is that? Where does it come from? So this uh, morality, as we call it, that itself is a clue to God. Because even if you've grown up in the worst environment, you still have this compass somewhere except in the very rare cases where the conditioning is so, so strong. In the same way, most humans in a universal way will say that a rose or a beautiful flower looks beautiful. Or a tarantula spider looks scary. So where does that sense of beauty come from? So the ancient Greeks, no? they also realize this, that there seems to be a, like a benchmark which is really universal and uh, available to everyone. So they said that there is something called the good. Okay? The good was what we would call the truth or God. So they would say the good. Okay? So the good would encompass beauty, truth, all, but the highest and they said that the truest form of the good 
is not available in the perceptual realm is beyond this world this was the main aspect of the platonic philosophy plato's philosophy was mainly built around this because everybody has this inherent sense of goodness better worse and you realize that it doesn't come from empirical dealings you know from just from uh, parents or just from society this seems to be a universal so then later uh, others agreed then they said okay there must be then like a heaven where all the best things in the best form is av- are available and then that becomes because we have a window to that in some way without perceiving that's why we can judge the beauty of something and say okay this is really beautiful but this is even more beautiful than that Mm-hmm. and um, so if you were to really deeply explore where all these insights this knowledge comes from you will find that the most valuable the most beautiful ones that make life worth living are known intuitively and not mentally like a beautiful painting you can't really decipher mentally you may have done all all the art theory and may write a great paper on it but in meeting it you see what do the the ones who are admirers of art they also when they are in front of a painting they try to become empty isn't it to meet the painting they try to become empty so they just if you observe like that so if you look at them then the words come later what they're trying to just meet it okay. that is to access your intuitive light so a sense of morality a sense of beauty a sense of kindness compassion love all of these things come intuitively all the mess comes mentally <laughs> and the level of beauty that you experience in the world really magnifies when you are empty of the mind like i never knew that even light like physical light is so pristine that we are surrounded by so much beauty in every frame of this movie these are the gifts of living with god but we must never make the gifts primary the gifts must always be the by products he must be the main thing always as i like to talk about him much more than his gifts although i know that to the mind the gift seems much more attractive than at times but then our intention becomes to get and it becomes god for me instead of me for god do you notice how we were or are when we are not even living in the world perceiving the world empty when we are mostly caught up in the head it's like a blurry 
hazy way of life. Yeah, you notice that? You just you don't know where you are, you have the time, you're thinking about things, half the time you're perceiving. It's just very convoluted hazy type of existence. I have memory, a strong memory of that in a few times. It has happened uh, in the last many years as well. That you recognize that wow, this is how it used to be. It's just like you're looking at something or you're hearing something, but half the time the mind is talking to you, so you can't really hear it. And then you you see, it's very, it's, it's not to, it's not a good way to live. It's not a fun way to live. It doesn't let you hear what you're trying to hear. It doesn't let you see what you're trying to see. And everybody has to work hard towards becoming empty. You see, even to see a mountain, you could have flown thousands of miles to go visit that mountain. But you go see it and you're worried about some work thing. And you don't even see the mountain and you came back. Many report like this, no? that they go to Vaishno Devi or they go to some temple where you get just a couple of seconds. So they just let you, okay, this is it, what, 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 but you are just thinking something or you are upset about how rudely the Pandit is talking to you or something like that. <laughs> and you didn't even notice the thing and then you cross and people, many times people say, they walked, trekked all the way up on the hill to Vaishno Devi and then you know, like they would thank you, they are honest about it. So they, they would say, but I didn't even see. But that is the nature of our day-to-day -day life at times. So it's not that without God, like my implorations are just like, leave such a great life and give it all up for God. No, it's a horrible life without God anyway. It's not true life in any sense of the word. You see, so our protestations are just out of habit. They're not out of any real sense of sacrifice or something. It's like you're, if you're addicted to a bad habit, then you protest because you're just addicted to it. It's not because you know it is better or good for you. And how, to what lengths humans have had to create mechanisms to get a taste of this, which can be our moment-to-moment -moment life. Yeah? Annual holidays. Just like, let's go out from all of this and go to somewhere peaceful so that I can be with myself. Where does the self go missing the rest of the time? <laughs> And you have to travel so much to be with yourself. It's absurd, no? If you really look at it objectively also, it's just like, what do we say? Like, when you go to work and things like that, you hear these things and you're just like, what? I mean, me time. Would you always with me? <laughs> You say, okay, I'm going to take this 10 days to myself. Huh? Then they get to the beautiful resort or wherever. Within half an hour, I'm bored. <laughs> what is there to do around here? Let's go to the concierge. Ah, you know, all the things, you know. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Well, then, then fill up the whole 10 days. <laughs> you'll watch this show. We'll go do this thing. You'll go do that thing. Then they'll be like, oh, holiday got over. And then they need a break from the, after the holiday. Mm -hmm. no? but animals don't need to do any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do, we can't also do the reverse thing, no? This we can, I don't mean that we must just be like, Ta -da! I, I live spontaneously. Yeah. <laughs> so I've come all this way. I have no idea what is there. 
which hotel am i meant to stay in to go to the <laughs> so that plan also doesn't work most don't even spot that that is the new plan that i was planning 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 and then somebody told me you have to live spontaneously so that's my new plan i live spontaneously but empty is neither of those and that's why we can't really understand that's why the frustration comes what does he want us to do should we plan or should we not plan <laughs> isn't it that's why we started satsang from ki chahiye kya isko when i say i'm planning is is don't plan when i say i'm living in fantasy is planning can be fine what does he want <laughs> i realize the frustration i do not realize it. then like zen will come up with things huh? like what is way 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 huh? huh? <laughs> doing not doing or not doing doing what is <laughs> one of the <laughs> in opposite zone seem troublesome that's a symptom of freedom but yesterday you said like that yeah Today you are saying the opposite, yeah. <laughs> so which is it then? I don't know. <laughs> Just want to share something funny. Yeah. Um, I had some sleep problems for four five months. Like wake up at two a.m. or three a.m. and <clears throat> typically. become so aware that you're not sleeping then that narrative starts you need to sleep oh it's so half an hour what have you been doing yeah. now try this pose do this turn the fan on off yeah. whatever <laughs> but after uh what was it ads yeah. um i started doing that like yeah. surrender in the sense that okay i'm up at 2 am and um, it became like oh it's an opportunity to meet god and so i just go into that uh, place and boom like it's just out i don't want to spook it too much by talking about it <laughs> but so far so <laughs> no that's very good that's really good because that's how the mind tricks can be inverted no? it becomes like a win win in deep sleep the truth is apparent if it wakes us up then also we are in the meeting with god it's when we neither way even there there was a trick father like uh, initially i did that innocently to meet god and it was beautiful i'd go back to sleep then after a week or two the mind said okay now try to meet god so you can sleep yeah. you make it a technique <laughs> you make it a technique too. so i had to let that go it's like it's okay yeah. if i don't sleep yeah. i'm going to stay with god so it's just yeah. amazing yeah. how you yeah. point those things out but even for us to catch that yeah. these pointers are like so powerful otherwise you can just get trapped in new loop So Father, so end of year Christmas and all this mm. sort of usual flurry of, you know, parties and invitations and all, and somehow um, kind of caught in, you know, caught between, you know, not, not wanting to isolate, and especially with family, you know, family member, you know, wife expectations, friends, and you know, kind of not wanting to be a like a loner, you know. Yeah. and sort of cut off that whole flow uh but at the same time you know feeling like quite jaded and like in advance yeah. you know it's so one yeah. thing <laughs> one thing when you've experienced it and you're jaded but yeah. it's like you just the thought is making yeah. making you jaded right <laughs> so what to do with the situation now 
I'll tell you when I find out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the biggest problem? The tip is if you grow grudgingly, you better not have fun. <laughs> There's uh, something uh, special about laughter when it's part of it. I know that it's happening. The magic in it, like this being, meeting, feel like it's all happening in the moment of laughter. There's no sense. You don't have to think. It's almost like a response of the body to. Do you think something special is like that? Papaji said, you can't laugh and think at the same time. Okay. Somebody wanted to ask a question. Okay, Ambika wants to come. Yes, <laughs> Father. Yes, Good evening. It's a beautiful moment. <laughs> I was waiting for some more like stays. And you said, I asked and you turned around. So I was like, wow, this is my moment. Nice. Good, good. So, I've been feeling very um, overwhelmed for the last few days, and uh, with a lot of these emotions around uh, life and logistics and like things to mm -hmm. do and also relationships around and things like that. <clears throat> and so something you said before that if you are not with presence, there's the only like uh, criteria to know whether something is off or something is on the path or I'm centered or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do not know when I leave that space. Mm -hmm. I come back after slowing down, but in the midst of chaos of logistics and doing things, and it feels like I lose it. I don't know if it makes sense, but I mean, you can't lose it, I know logically, but I feel like I'm not centered, like inside myself, I know that I'm in my head now. Yes. 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 This is not, uh, this is our experience that if we get into the hypnosis of the mind, then it seems like we leave the presence behind, that we know intellectually that God's presence cannot go, it is here, <coughs> but our lived yeah. experience is not yeah. that. Our lived experience is very limited and almost mm. hellish that way so so but the thing mm. to do or the thing to not do is to do the post-mortem about why i left the presence and why i can't always be in it the moment you notice that you left it just retreat mm. back to your heart just retreat back to his light mm. and just to stay mm. there because mm -hmm. the mind uses this one-two punch combination. First it distracts you, then the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of the mind, which is understood spirituality, will, will make you guilty and unworthy exactly. and say, you're just not doing it well and you're not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. You see, so that two mm -hmm. punch is much more uh, strong than the one punch. So mm -hmm. just what happens, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that uh, you're in the presence, and then something in, is perceived and the mind uses that and says, ah, like this, like this, something. And it seems that we mm. went along with that in that thing. And we don't know mm. how long that hypnosis <laughs> will last. But there comes a point where we do notice. 
because uh, we have come to some insight in our spirituality so mm. it will not be endless so the the when we notice the mind will also try to become central central after that by saying okay this means that you're not really progressing spiritually or this is happening to you all of that so don't fall for mm. that you notice that you're not in the present just return no? mm. and then the mind will trouble you again by saying but why does it keep happening again and again and it should stop when will it stop you see but all of that mm. is basically more distraction to keep you away from the present you see so so just our posture should become when you notice you come back notice and return just notice and return and when we are not able to do that not to beat ourselves up for it not to make ourselves feel guilty or unworthy or analyze conceptually intellectually why it is not happening then the presence itself we find a way to grow in your life your life will grow actually in the presence itself so that, that mm. evening happens organic without without uh, thinking about it the only thinking you need probably a little bit is to just commit mm. when you make the commit you don't think about it anymore you just remain <clears throat> and then it is the nature of the human condition that we will fail something will come it will tempt us we will we'll get involved with our mind and start to get worried about something or start to get upset about something you see in those moments when we are caught up we can't do anything about them those are write offs mm-hmm. so just write them off no those are the mind will want you to Sorry? think more about those moments the mind will want you to think more about those moments but i am saying those yes. are write offs so you just write them off right offs and say okay, okay that's that so don't uh, don't waste any more time on the time that got wasted that is a very tricky mind trick is it so just mm-hmm. meet god fresh meet god fresh and then you may continue like that for seconds minutes hours days we can't predict so mm. the idea is to continue like that and then the mind will mm. tempt us again with something then we will fall for a moment and then we just return mm. back home mm. so just like that and it is not an oppressive process it is not, not a recursive process <laughs> the mind will try to convince you that oh but that's that's so lame we have to keep looping like this you see no but it's a deepening every time mm. yeah, a single yeah. moment We're that not you not practice very yeah. yes a single moment that you spend in god presence is not wasted so so just utilize every opportunity that you have in your life to remain in that and don't judge yourself harshly don't uh, make benchmarks don't just this moment you have just be with god this moment be with god this moment be with god. no amount of making conclusions or even helpful judgments about yourself can compete with that being with god mm-hmm. <laughs> All my love, all my love. Thank you.